Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And what I'm going to do with this video is compare uh, plant-based veganism versus ketosis when it comes to the three major chronic diseases, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. So I don't put myself out as a science writer. I don't have a staff. I'm a clinician. I work full-time, three days a week. I also have two other companies besides my office. And with my office, I have maybe 25 employees. But I'm, but I'm a clinician, and I study from science writers. I study people who look at the research as a whole, and, um, and I attend seminars that are taught by clinicians who are, are also uh, research geeks, if you will. So when I look at um, plant-based eating versus, veganism, uh, versus ketosis, um, you got to know the history. So with ketosis, it was really well studied in the 1920s. And by 1940, uh, pharmaceutical companies made drugs that stopped epilepsy. So the original research in the 20s was for epileptic children. So there's no research on ketosis between, let's say, 19, World War II up to 1972. And that's when Dr. Atkins wrote his first book. So, and there was some missing data, and it's being discovered now at a very fast pace. So the research now is great. But I was reading an article today that was written in 2014 by a surgical oncologist. And even he had missing data, and it was only three years ago. So there's new data now, in, um, now it's the beginning of 20, uh, December 2017, and there's new information now that didn't even exist three years ago. But regarding the research over time, uh, plant-based veganism studies have had a head start. So let's just go over some things in the research about uh, veganism versus ketosis. Okay, but I want to start off with this title. The American Heart Association president suffers a heart attack at the age of 52. This came out a couple days ago, November 29th, 2017. And I don't know what his diet is, but it's probably, you know, if he follows the guidelines of the AHA, AHA he's eating margarine, not butter. He's eating canola oil, not coconut oil. He's obviously avoiding uh, lard. He's doing a low meat, low-fat diet. And he's probably eating a lot of carbs. Maybe he's eating bread. But he's eating the type of diet that causes a heart attack. Now, you can have a really good diet and have a fungus in your heart or a parasite or a virus or mercury or aluminum toxins can be in your heart causing the symptoms that you have. So a year and a half ago, I was exposed to black mold. It settled in my heart. And February 3rd, 2016, I thought I was dying from a heart attack. Um, my pain was a 4 out of 10, so it wasn't that severe, but I had high blood pressure, I had a racing pulse, I had anxiety and palpitations, and it was from black mold. So I have a machine in my office that I use to test for blocked arteries. It's called the Meridian, and, um, and I never showed up as having any arterial issue ever. So when I had these symptoms, I was thinking, okay, it's not actually the arteries, what is it? And I, it took about nine months to find the cause, which was black mold. So I'm just saying the president of the AHA may have black mold in his chest, but um, he's doing something not right. He needs to learn some holistic medicine. And if he ever calls me up, I'll help him out. Okay, so let's talk about this research right here. And it says, long-term effects of a ketogenic diet in obese patients. And I'm going to read the conclusion. It says, the ketogenic diet significantly reduced the body weight and body mass index of the patients. Furthermore, it decreased the level of triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, and blood glucose, and increased the level of HDL cholesterol. And um, administering a ketogenic diet for a relatively longer period of time did not produce any significant side effects in the patients, so there was nothing bad about it. So that shows that ketosis is good for people who are overweight and have some markers of heart disease. Let's go to this next one. Now this is basically two diets, two groups of people, and both diets are low calorie with exercise, but the one diet is high carb, low fat. The other diet is high fat, low carb. And let me just read the conclusions here. Both diets achieved comparable weight loss and HbA1c reductions. That's a long-term measurement of sugar, blood sugar. The low-carb diet sustained greater reductions in diabetes medication requirements. 
and improvements in daytime blood glucose stability and blood lipid profile with no adverse kidney effects, suggesting greater type 2 diabetes management optimization. So the people eating the high fat, lower carb diet had greater results and most importantly, were able to get off the medications. And you know that's important because medications are propping you up as your health goes down and down and down. And they cause lactic acidosis, the mechanism of chronic disease. They make things worse, they cause side effects, they harm the liver, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so we've talked about obesity, heart disease, and we talked about type 2 diabetes. And this one is about multiple outcomes. I'm going to talk at, at the bottom here about um, cancer. Okay, so we know a vegan diet is good for the heart, and but it's not as good as a higher fat ketogenic diet. Oh, and by the way, the previous study was not a ketogenic diet. It was just higher fat. You get better results uh, going into ketosis. Okay, now with this one, it says a vegan diet confirmed a significant reduced risk, minus 15% of incidence from total cancer. Now that's fantastic. So you compare the vegan diet versus the standard American diet, and that is absolutely fantastic. It's a great reason to be a vegan. But I want to point out that this is a lecture given by Otto Warburg. He's the uh, father of physiology. He figured out how cancer cells metabolize and make energy. And he's, in his lecture, he says, many experts agree that one could prevent about 80% of all cancers in man. So with the standard American diet causing as much cancer as it is, your diet should decrease your chance of cancer by 80%, not just 15%. So Warburg was a big uh, proponent of uh, changing the cell metabolism away from burning sugar and away from burning other forms of sugar like lactate, um, into burning fat, especially ketones, which is a water-soluble chemical made from fat. So, and he talks right here about keeping away the known carcinogens from the normal body cells. So it's not just about diet. It's actually also about detoxing and eating a clean, clean diet, organic diet, and staying away from toxins in the environment. You know, if you work in a coal mine or if you work in a factory, you're going to get more toxins than the average person. But uh, Otto Warburg said that cancer is lactic acid fermentation, which is a form of uh, sugar. So uh, burning sugar in the presence of oxygen with a toxin. So he's addressing the sugar here and the toxicity. So being a vegan is not good enough. You want to detoxify. You want to get into ketosis. And um, that will hopefully decrease your chance of cancer by 80%. The last thing I want to say is that ketosis can expose weak organs. So if you have a tendency to hypothyroidism and you get into ketosis, it may make the thyroid worse. If you have a weak gallbladder and you're eating more fat, that can, make, that can expose your gallbladder and maybe get, start to get some pain or some digestive issues. But these are things that uh, we can fix up with supplements. So I, I feel like I need to say this um, on a regular basis because people do have trouble getting, a, getting into ketosis. And the younger you are, the easier it is. But the more toxic you are, the harder it is. So over time, um, as you accumulate toxins and mold and metals, etc., it's just harder and harder for your body to get into ketosis. When you're younger and your cells are healthier, they are more easily adaptable to changing from burning sugar over to burning fat. So these are just a couple of really important points when it, when it comes time for you to try to get into ketosis. And of course, always I have to say, then you get out of it. You go in and out, in and out.